My name's Susanna Clapp. I'm the theatre critic of The Observer, where I've worked for 20 years. Before that, I worked in publishing and in literary journalism. I helped to found the London Review of Books. And I've written two books about writers I worked with and who became my friends. Very different writers. One, the travel writer, Bruce Chatwin, and the other, the fabulous fairy tale remaker, Angela Carter. It's very exciting for me to be the first time in India, in Mumbai, with Tata Lit, Inca Loud, and the British Council, because walking through the streets here is for me like walking through a million different exciting theatre shows. So I'm using my metier and life, what could be better? As I helped to set up the London Review of Books many years ago now, I think the sad thing that's happened in arts journalism, in England certainly, is that there's less of it. People have become a bit frightened of criticising things. It tends to be the case that people simply want to promote things, or we all want to promote the arts. But I like to do it through criticism, through a sense of objective argument, as well as description. But description's very important. And I think the tip that I would give, I think the most important thing, certainly as a theatre critic, and indeed any sort of arts journalism, is to, first of all, to work from your own experience, to tell the truth, which is not easy. Don't bother about what anybody else is saying, obviously. Secondly, tiny thing, I'd keep a diary. Keep a diary of everything you see. And then you are telling your own truth, not dependent on large critical judgments. See as much as you can of absolutely everything. And don't keep a sort of distinction between different arts. And also, be very, always be aware of sticking up for the unpopular. Don't ever go for the thing that's easy to say. Don't do the opposite. Don't try to say the unpopular thing. But look for the thing that's out of the way, odd, which needs championing. I feel very strongly that the most exciting thing, certainly as a theatre critic I feel this, but as a book journalist also, it's when you find somebody new. It's very, very easy to stand up for somebody who's already famous, whose talent has been discovered. If you can stand against the tide and find somebody who hasn't yet been discovered, find a new talent, that's always the most exciting thing. Whether it's a designer, a writer, an actor, a producer, or even a place. The great thing about theatre criticism is that it takes you, or the great thing about working in the theatre, is it takes you into a million different worlds. It's not just a question of words, it's not just a question of performance, but it's also a question of visual arts, and also it's a question of building. By going into a theatre, by being transformed there, when you come out, you look at the rest of the world in a completely different way, and that's what the best arts journalism should do for you. But of course, when you're writing a review, you have to come up with a judgement. I don't think you have, when you're writing a biography or any other sort of book, to actually be a judge. And actually, even with reviews, I think you can overdo the judgment thing. The important thing is to describe in a way that a person reading the review can see whether they might agree with you. Because after all, I might have a completely different view of the world from somebody reading it. And they need to know not just that I think something's good, but why I think it's good. The worst thing in criticism, in my view, is the adjective. You know, good, bad, delightful, terrible. What does that mean? It means nothing unless you know where I, where I situate my own responses. It's very important to give an objective sense of the thing that you are seeing. Of course, with a book, you have much more latitude. You can meander. Not every phrase has to be absolutely pungent and sharp. Indeed, if it is, it can hold you up. You're just arrested by all these little witticisms darting all over the place. You need a sense of story. You need a sense of unwinding. And perhaps a little bit of mystery as well. Certainly not the sense of somebody standing on high, looking down on their character. You can respond to so many different things all with a sense of openness and a sense of exploration. And that, again, is what arts journalism should be.